Welcome to Auto Exotica. This is a 2021 Aston Martin Vantage. Not just a Vantage, this is the new Roadster. Uh, I'd love to tell you about it, but I'm actually just about to take a drive. Um, hey, I know. Why don't you hop in? Let's check it out. Looks much more aggressive, and I think it looks great 
on the very bright paint colors that uh, Aston Martin offers. The interior quality is great, I have to say. There is leather everywhere. It all feels uh, top shelf. One thing that's odd, the center console, there's got to be 85 buttons there. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but there are a lot of buttons. Some people like that, some people don't. Personally, I'm a fan of buttons and knobs and switches um, because you can quickly learn where they are versus scrolling through menus. I would rather be paying attention to the road and just reach over and tuck something. In this car, this is heavily laden with buttons. Uh, I like it. However, what I'm not crazy about is the fact that the screen, it feels outdated and it takes forever to enter an address. This generation of Vantage is only available as a V8, and it's a good V8. It's a 4 liter twin turbo, making 503 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, and 505 foot pounds of torque, all the way from 2,000 to 5,000 RPM. It's also a good thing that they kept the peak horsepower up there at 6,000 RPM because this Vantage wants to be played with, it wants to be wound out and redline doesn't happen until 7,000 RPM. This V8 engine is actually sourced from Mercedes AMG, and it's the same engine that's currently powering the AMG GT coupe and roadster. And this is about a 3,600 pound car. Not light, but not a pig either. And 503 horsepower does move it down the road nicely. I'm driving it in drive right now. You can also switch to manual mode and use the flappy paddles. So these paddles are nice and long, so they're accessible even while you're turning. So I prefer this to the uh, paddles that move with the steering wheel. And these paddles are metal, they feel good, they act nicely, and the transmission, which is an 8-speed ZF transmission, uh, responds quickly to, the, to downshifts and upshifts. has three drive modes, nothing called normal, nothing called comfort. This is a sports car, so the default drive mode is called sport. Up from that is sport plus, and up from that is track. Suspension stiffens up a bit. It stiffens up very noticeably in track mode. Steering firms up a bit, and the most noticeable thing is that the exhaust, which it has a nice healthy growl in regular sport mode, it's significantly louder in Sport Plus and even louder than that in uh, track. So I'm driving sedately right now. I've got it in drive, it's shifting by itself. I've got it in sport mode and shifts and shifts and shifts. It's got eight gears to play with and it wants to get up to eighth as quickly as possible because why not? If I switch this to Sport Plus, if I gently accelerate, it goes up to 2,000 RPM in each gear before it shifts. If I move it all the way up to track mode and accelerate gently, I don't know why you would ever do that, but hey, you'll see that even accelerating gently, easy on the throttle, goes up to almost 4,000 RPM before it decides to shift. And if you let off, fireworks. And when you slow down to a certain point, maybe 3,000 RPM, it wants to downshift. Listen to this. Downshift. I'm not doing that. It's doing that by itself. Okay, so here we are in track mode. I've got a nice straight stretch here. I'm just going to take my foot off the brake. I'm going to plant it on the accelerator and off we go. I've got it in drive. It's going to do everything by itself. Ready? So it, it holds on to gears longer. 
doesn't want to get out of that gear because if I'm taking a corner in track mode, it wants to it wants me to be able to exit that corner fast. So it keeps the RPMs up so that I'm into a higher horsepower, higher torque and throttle response. It's quite quick. Alright? So just as a point of comparison, I'll pull out onto this highway. I've got it back in normal sport mode in drive so in reality it's accelerating almost as quickly as it does in track but when it shifts it's not quite as hard it's a little bit more of a smooth leisurely shift and it doesn't rev quite to seven grand before it shifts but either way it's quick. This car is quick. If I want to shift it into manual mode so that I can play with the flappy paddles, all I have to do is hit one of these paddles. Now it's taking it out of drive and it's letting me do the, the shifting. But I prefer three pedals and a manual in this car. I probably would, but I, I'm a devout three pedal guy. Uh, but I think this car is small enough, it's sporty enough, that a manual transmission would feel right, it would feel appropriate. This car does accelerate well. Zero to 60 is about 3.7 seconds. And also it has a 190 mile per hour top end with the top up. It's got adaptive dampers. It's got a electronic limited slip differential. It's got torque vectoring. It just makes the car feel a little bit more agile. Over on the left-hand side of the uh, steering wheel, there's a, a, a button just for your damper setting. So I can have it in track mode, and I can have the damper set to the softest setting. Right side of the steering wheel is a button for switching from mode to mode. Left side is setting the dampers where I want them. The engine is located very low and as far back in the chassis as they could so it's actually considered a front mid engine what that does is of course it helps with your uh, weight distribution the transmission that eight speed zf automatic transmission is also located in the back and there's a carbon fiber drive shaft connecting the engine to the, to the transmission and all of that is for weight distribution so it gives the 49 front 51 back weight distribution which is still excellent and if you're in the mood to attack a twisty stretch of road but you don't feel like playing with the flappy paddles put it in track mode because it does hold those gears longer in track mode um, it, it, it works brilliantly it will downshift at the appropriate time when you're slowing down to enter a corner. This is a good example of a transmission that, in track mode at least, seems to uh, pretty much do what I would do if I used the flappy paddles. Average back roads here, and the suspension is not beating me up at all. I feel the texture of the pavement, but it's not shaking my teeth loose. You go over a bump and it's a thump. It's not a thrum. It's very solid. I feel no chassis flex or cowl shake or any of that nonsense that you sometimes get when you chop the roof off of a coupe. The suspension setup here is a double wishbone front, multi-link rear suspension. We've got 255 tires up front, 295s in the back, high performance tires of course, and that torque vectoring which uh, sweetens up the uh, steering even more. Uh, it's just adhered to the pavement. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So the convertible top, the Roadster top, is brilliantly executed. I'm going to roll along at about 25 miles per hour here and show you how quickly and easily it comes up. And there it is. Aston Martin makes the fastest convertible top available today. It's a Z-fold top, 
benefit of that is that the stack height is really low. It's really squat so that when the top is folded down, it doesn't intrude on the cargo space much. That's fantastic. And it's just one button over on the door panel. You're driving along, you get caught in the rain, top up, seven seconds. Love it. This car totals out at just under $204,000. That is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for any car, but when you look at what it's competing with, it, it works. It's a, it's a beautifully executed car. It handles beautifully. The engine is a, a work of art. Uh, the car obviously is one of the more eye-catching cars out there. So I give it a hearty two thumbs up. Well done, Aston Martin. It's not the classic DB5 that James Bond drove, but I think James Bond would be very happy with this one. Nicely done.